Hey guys, what's up? I'm Noah, this is Analog Resurgence, and today we're taking a look at the Polaroid iZone. So these are Polaroid cameras. A Polaroid 600, a Polaroid Spectra from later on, and a Polaroid SX70. These are all cameras that you can buy brand new factory fresh film for from a company called Polaroid Originals right now in black and white and color and just a few different variations. This, however, is a Polaroid iZone. And this is a camera that you can't buy new factory fresh film for from anybody anywhere. The iZone is kind of similar to another camera that I talked about before, which is the Polaroid Captiva. And the Captiva and the Joy Cam and the iZone are all obsolete Polaroid cameras that nobody is making brand new film for and nobody plans to do so ever again in the future. Which means that if you come across these cameras, then they're not exactly the best Polaroid cameras to pick up to start using. So the iZone was introduced back in 1999 and it was cheap and simple to use and mostly just made of plastic as you can kind of see. And so it was really, really aimed at like teenagers and just younger kids. So unlike all those other Polaroid cameras that you can buy film for and even the Captiva, the iZone actually took uh, two AA batteries in order to power the camera. All those other cameras had batteries in the bottom of their film packs when you bought the film. On the top of the camera, you have a little dial here to tell the camera kind of what lighting situation you're in. So you could easily switch it between outdoor in lots of sun, outdoor cloudy, or just indoor when it would use the flash that's built into the camera. Now that's really just a simplified aperture control for the camera that would just kind of change the opening size of the lens. So then you could kind of approximate the amount of light that it would let in to expose the film automatically for you. And it had a built-in flash at the front, which again, made it really just versatile for kids and teens to be able to use indoors or just hanging out with friends and be able to really use it in just really any sort of situation. Then there was the film. And the iZone film was completely different from the previous kind of Polaroid film that you were used to seeing. Even the Captiva stuff that still kind of resembled a Polaroid. The iZone film opened up at the bottom here to load it in and it took film in these little, little cartridges. Really the iZone cartridge is about the size of a box of matches and one of the iZone images itself wasn't much bigger than like a couple of postage stamps. Now they did however come in packs of 12, which is different from all the other Polaroids at the time where they came in packs of 10. And now brand new stuff from the Polaroid Originals people comes in packs of eight. Now all the images were kind of jammed into here and you would pull them out on a strip of colored backing paper from the camera. They would be centered in the middle of this kind of colorful backing paper that you could then tear off and just have the finished image. It is still kind of impressive that for a little, little image like that, they could still fit all the chemicals in there and get everything to work and just be able to pull it out and have everything develop properly just like a normal Polaroid. Because again, these were entirely analog cameras, which meant that there was an active chemical component aspect to the images that you were getting out of this camera. So once you pulled it out and tore it off of your backing paper, then you had your teeny tiny little Polaroid. And there was also a little variation on the film where you could get film that had sticky backs to it. So then when you took the images out of the camera and took them off the backing paper, then they were little stickers and your Polaroids could just stick onto things. It's kind of interesting now, especially when it was so niche and like just a little thing at the early 2000s for just younger kids to use. And that's definitely not to say that it was a bad idea because I mean, everybody kind of loves a Polaroid and the joy of like instant photography and just being able to have the images as soon as you take them. So releasing just a really simple, easy to use, plastic, cheap camera for like younger kids and teenagers to to be able to take their own Polaroids with and have it be kind of fun and you could stick them on things or just like have little ones to like pass around to people. It's kind of very much just a product of the early 2000s in terms of the aesthetic of the camera and the 
packaging and any sort of commercials you would see for it. So the Polaroid iZone was ultimately discontinued in 2006, which actually brings it pretty close to the time when Polaroid discontinued all of their instant photography stuff in general. The 600 film, the Spectra film, the, any of the Joy Cam film, the SX-70 stuff, and now the iZone stuff. So it really was one of the last pieces of innovation and products that they kind of put out there in their dying days of instant photography products. So again, Polaroid Originals does not make film for the Polaroid iZone, and they will probably never make film for the Polaroid iZone. It's its own size, it's its own cartridge, it's its own completely different design. Now all the iZone film that you could get for Polaroids is like 10 years or 12 years out of date, which means that if you're buying expired Polaroid iZone film, I cannot make you any promises as to the kind of results that you will get out of that stuff, depending especially on how it's stored. Now there is a link that I will throw down in the description for a article from a number of years ago where somebody converted and gutted a Polaroid iZone to be able to shoot a now other type of expired dead format, APS film. And if you've seen my previous video on APS film, I'm not exactly a fan of the format. but. If anybody wants to destroy an iZone to try and put APS film through it, then I will throw a link in case anybody is interested in doing that. I would also like to highlight one of the only slight variations on the actual iZone model that came out. Most of them were just like this one. They took batteries and they had very few features and there were some of different colors and whatever. But there is a Polaroid iZone camera that had a built-in FM radio in a headphone socket, which means that that iZone is probably now the most useful Polaroid iZone model in existence. Because even though you can't get film for these cameras anymore to use and actually take pictures on the camera, you can still listen to FM radio. Hey, thanks so much for watching and subscribe if you haven't done so already as I continue to post all sorts of analog content like this every week about just all sorts of different formats and gear and just weird stuff that people have questions about and want to learn more about. And if you're interested at all in supporting the channel, then there is a link in the description down below to the Analog Resurgence Patreon. You can hop over there and check that out. If there's any sorts of different analog topics surrounding film and cameras and these different formats that I've talked about, then comment down below and I'll do my best to answer questions and delve more into topics that I've talked about a little bit here in the past or more stuff in the future as well, depending on what you guys really want to see. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys soon.